everyone. So I'm going to be speaking about smart workplace design for a healthy, safe and productive workplace. And we're focusing more on the commercial, sort of the built environment where we actually occupy as an office. So um, Marston Collective, we're a strategic thinking agile design firm. So we work quite flexibly with our clients to try and understand what their specific requirements are and then help them to create an environment that reflects their business brand and values. <laughs> So the way that we do that is we think it's quite important to be creating, um, creating dynamic and healthy work environments. And through that we think that encouraging activity to improve performance and productivity is, um, is really good for those workplaces because there's a lot of research that suggests that that's going to encourage that activity and that that will increase, increase performance and productivity. So when we design an environment, we want to make a place where people actually want to be. So there's three factors that we consider important to this and that's that it feels good. So people actually like coming to work every day. That it works, so that the flow is right, that people can communicate and interact well, and that they can connect together, and that it supports them in getting their job done. There's nothing more frustrating than having a space that doesn't help you get your job done, that actually stops that. So we believe that work design has changed. It used to be quite manual labour workforce, and some of you may still work in that space where We've got lots of manual labour, but for the majority of it, we've actually moved towards machines and technology. So even in those labour um, type workforces, we're using those machines and technology to assist us in getting our work done. One example of that is if we look at the garbage collector, we used to be lifting the bins and, and tipping them into the trucks, whereas now it's all automated. So the garbage collector is no longer active in their job, they're sitting in a sedentary type of work style. If we look at how that's evolved in workplace in the 1900s, we were very industrialised and we were very hands-on, whereas now we're very much, we're sitting all day in the office landscape. Lots of computers and lots of technology. So we're no longer a labour workforce, but we're a knowledge workforce. So we've got lots of information and knowledge, but that's all driven by technology. And the way that technology is changing, a good example of this is if we look at the Pope's inauguration. In 2005, there's very little technology happening here. We've got this guy down here with his flip phone. Eight years later, at 2013, look at the volume of lights from phones there. So the amount of technology and the advancements that are happening, it's happening quite rapidly. But what does that mean in terms of how our workplace is evolving? The impact that technology is happening on us is that we're born with technology in our hands now. So our babies know how to use technology, sometimes better than us. We're constantly connected. You can always get hold of us. We've got our mobile phones connected to us constantly. And we can work anywhere at any time. So this means that our lives have changed quite significantly with this rapid onset of technology. We are constantly getting information a lot faster. So our businesses have got faster. Our travel has got faster. Our data connections have got faster. That's mean that we're getting much more information through. So we're bombarded constantly with emails and newsletters and internet. We've got social media constantly updating. So we're constantly being bombarded with all of this information. We've also gone global. We've got a much stronger geographical reach. We've got a global economy with flight enabling us to get anywhere, anytime, a lot quicker. So this means that we're just constantly being bombarded with more and more and more. We're always on. We're always connected. We're sitting for extended periods of time and we're spending far longer working. As Brad said, we're here for a really long time. So we need to start considering what that means in terms of our workplace. So with all this technology and our busy lives, we've got all of this going on all of the time. We need to focus and concentrate on what's actually important. Um, we've all heard about the sitting is the new smoking. And there's been some studies done by David Dunstan from Baker EDI. And he's found that prolonged sitting actually affects our, changes our metabolic rate, increases our glucose levels, and it's increasing our risk of diseases such as diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and colon cancer. So Victoria Health actually did a study, and they reported that these statistics, there's five million people are overweight, in Australia, 1.3 million of these people are obese. That it's costing us four million days in lost productivity. And that the 
cost to the Australian economy is $3.6 billion every year. So that's a pretty staggering number. And so given these statistics, it's a significant financial cost that our economy is suffering by poor health. That our businesses, so it makes good business sense to take care of our employees and consider their well-being. So not to mention the fact that we're spending, we're working longer hours and we're spending much more time at work anywhere than we do anywhere else. So as people who actually help shape and create these work environments, we actually feel like we have a responsibility to make sure that we're at least educating our clients around some of the good practices that they can make in terms of supporting their staff and helping them improve their wellbeing and therefore actually improve their company's bottom line as well. So we do that by considering a different range of spaces and taking a much more holistic perspective to creating a workplace environment and somewhere that people actually want to be, but it's looking at both the social and emotional aspects as well. So we want it to be somewhere that people can relax, that they can recharge and they can prepare for the next activity. So we look at this through a range of spaces and we've identified these as quiet spaces. So these are spaces where you can concentrate. You can work alone or you can work among others. Collaborative spaces where you can brainstorm, where you can create and work with others. Standing, so spaces where you can sit and stand. Lounging, spaces to relax, read or work informally with others. And then bump spaces, so spaces where we're going to create interaction with other employees. So there's been a fair bit of hype around activity-based working, free-range working, agile working, and the old one of hot desking. But it doesn't need to be an environment like that that actually helps to create these spaces. We think that you can create these spaces within a traditional work environment where everyone has still access to their own desk if needed, but it, that needs to be looked at on a case-by-case -case basis based on the organisation. So what I want to do is talk you through a case study of a project that we've recently completed. Um, we went with this client, so this is iSeq, they're an enterprise class data service solutions provider. They wanted to future-proof their organisation. So we went through an engagement process with um, this client. We worked with their senior management team and we did some focus groups and some engagement with their um, employees to find out what was working in their organisation, what wasn't working, what their culture was, what their brand was, what they actually wanted to deliver for their organisation. And we came together and put this space together. So we, when we design, we want to look at it much deeper than just how pretty it is. We want to actually make sure it functions, that it works, that it supports people in actually getting their job done and that it speaks to the brand culture of the organisation. So what we've done here is to give you some examples of how those spaces have been put into action in this particular work environment, um, we've got some examples here. So this is the quiet spaces. So this is just a small room with um, a single bench, one or two chairs. It's isolated so you can either be in there quietly and you can work quietly, you can do a Skype call, a webinar or you can have a one-on-one -on -one meeting in there but it's somewhere away from the general day-to-day -day work environment that you can sort of take yourself off to and recharge a little bit or work and concentrate because there's a lot of complaints that we do hear about open plan workplaces that you can't concentrate. This is how we start to ad address that and it's about having the right ratio of these spaces in the work environment as well. The collaborative spaces so there's two examples here. This is more of a soft setting collaboration space and then we've got the more robuster space over there. So you've got an eight person standing table, whiteboards, TVs, it's connected with technology. So we have a space where people can come together and they can actually communicate and collaborate and brainstorm together. Or we can sit and have a more quiet, informal meeting here in this space here. But it's about having those connection spaces. Again, just away from the workplace so that the day-to-day -day work environment so that people can come together and connect and have a bit more of a robust conversation. We also then look at the standing spaces. So our client wanted to um, future-proof their organisation and this was a seven-year investment for them. So typically an office fit-out is around that seven-year turnover because of your lease cycles. So they wanted to invest in stitch to stand workstations, which we've done here. So each of these workstations are electronically height adjustable, so that the, each individual has complete control over their work environment. They can sit, they can stand, depending on how high, how tall they are, they can adjust it to suit. And you can see all three ranges there. We also introduced lounging, and we did this in a variety of ways. So we've got a more quiet, sort of private look type lounge here, and then we've got some more banquet type lounge seating here. And the idea of this is that you can actually then with your mobile and technology devices you can actually relocate and work in a more appropriate environment and change it up during the day so you're not being stuck in one spot in your desk. So it's creating those different physical ranges of movement 
through different postural settings. And then we've got the bump set setting. So we've got these spaces here which actually encourage connection and collaboration with people. So Gallup, who are authority on employee engagement, have done extensive research into what actually makes people happy at work. And what they found is that people who are engaged at work feel connected to the people they work with and they enjoy being there. And so companies who reported higher levels of engagement showed that the strongest effects were on their levels of customer loyalty metrics, their productivity, their employee turnover, their safety, absenteeism and quality. So by creating these spaces where you're actually connecting people together, you're actually encouraging that level of engagement, which is having dramatic effects on the return on investment for each of the businesses. But when we design these spaces, we don't just purely look at this. We also work with consulting engineers to make sure that the air quality is right, that the lighting's right, the ventilation is working. And we just want to make sure that we've got the flow of the whole space is connected and, and correct as well. So it's quite an end-to-end -end process that we go through. We then conducted a survey of the staff at the completion of this project, and this is what we found with some of the data. So 35% of people said that they were healthier as a result of being in the new workplace that 65% of them stated that their workstation greatly contributed to this. So the fact that they could stand at their workstation and had that user control, that greatly contributed to them feeling healthier at work. 96% of people rated that the height adjustability of their workstation was functional to, highly, to extremely functional. So the ability to adjust that workstation again was very important to the employees. And 67% of people rated their chair from comfortable to extremely comfortable. So little pieces make up this bigger story. In relation to the workstation alone, we then did some further studies and we found that 80% of staff were using the sit-to-stand function in their workstation. So there is sometimes some think that it's a bit of a hype, it's a bit of a gimmick having the sit-to-stand functionality of the workstation, but 80% of people were adopting the use of it. And what we found that 26% of people were never adjusting it 58% of people were adjusting it one to two times a day and 16% were adjusting it three to five times a day. And when asked how long they were actually standing for, 11% said 15 to 30 minutes, 33 said 30 minutes to half to an hour, 11% said one to two hours, 28% two hours and 17% of people were actually standing all day. So in that never adjusting, we had people who never took it from sitting and we had people who never took it down from standing. So then we asked them how that was impacting on their physical well-being. And 95% of people said that being able to stand at their desk had improved their physical well-being. That they no long 42% no longer got the afternoon lethargy. So going back to what the, the Baker EDI studies were saying about glucose levels and the drop in glucose levels in the afternoon, increasing the afternoon lethargy, 42% of people no longer got that afternoon lethargy. So we're starting to balance out our blood glucose levels, which is improving our metabolism. 47% of people had less backache. 56% of people were less tired. So imagine if your workforce was less tired. How much more productive are they going to be? 56% had improved concentration. And 67% of people said they felt healthier. So if they're the statistics that your employees are reporting, what do you think that's actually having on their emotional well-being? I think they're going to be better employees as a result. So then we sort of went and spoke to them about what they felt about the office in general. And what we found is that 50% of people said that they had greatly to significantly enhanced their personal relationships as a result of the design of this workplace. 63% of people said that they were felt more collaborative in the workplace. So they're communicating better, they're connecting better. 68% of people said that their job satisfaction had increased. So they're happier at work. And 87% of them have actually said that they were happier. From between happy and extremely happy. And 58% of people said that they felt that they were more productive in this environment. So the statistics here show that with a good, a well-designed work environment, you can actually improve the productivity of your people. And this is their feedback their direct feedback. We've also had statistics on other projects that we've completed and we've seen employee sick leave go down by 45%, staff retention has gone down by, has dropped, staff turnover has dropped by 60%, but also even energy savings. We've had an organisation where we're reporting 25% in energy reduction costs as a result of the new workplace design. 
So there's significant return on investment that you can get by doing this, but also encouraging the employee wellbeing. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Melissa. Um, when Melissa first showed us her presentation a couple of weeks ago, the statistics that she has there paint a really important picture of the importance of collaboration and of all, all um, individuals that may be impacted within the environment coming together and therefore the opportunities there are to make those improvements. Of course, not everybody works within a built environment and um, I'm sure many of you here will know um, that you only have to step outside, the, uh, step outside the office to see the type of environments that, that individuals work within. However, what it does paint though is a really important picture about taking that step back thinking about the environment that somebody is working within, whether it may be a cab environment within a, a truck um, or within a built environment or other, um, and the importance of, of collaboration and bringing those individuals together in order to provide some long-term solutions. So thank you very much indeed, Melissa, for providing the presentation there.